Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a realistic 3D business card mockup in Photoshop using Smart Objects. You can download the project files to see how everything was put together and have files to work with if you don't have any of your own. Let's get started. So the first thing that you'll need is a photo reference to work from. It's not absolutely necessary, but it makes getting the perspective right in your mockup a lot easier. It doesn't even have to be a high quality photo, it can be taken with a cell phone or something like that. So we're starting with a blank canvas and ours is 1280 by 720. And we want our mockup to look like it's sitting on a wooden table, so first we're going to open our wood texture as a new document by dragging it into Photoshop. And we'll press Ctrl A to select the entire canvas, then Ctrl C to copy it, and then back in our new document Ctrl V to paste it in. You need to make sure that you copy and paste it into the document like this so it's not linked to the original file. If you don't, it might end up getting overwritten when we edit things later. So now I can close my wood texture, and I'm going to right click and convert this to a smart object, and rename it to background. Next I'll zoom out a bit and press Ctrl T to enter free transform mode, and then I can hold shift and rotate this around about 30 degrees and move it to the center of my document. Before doing anything else, I'm going to right click and choose distort, and I'm going to drag this top point down towards the middle of my document. This will help us add some perspective. Next I'm going to right click again and choose scale, and I'm just going to scale this down a bit and move it around until it just covers my canvas. Then I can hit enter to place it. So now you can see we have a nice angled background that has a little perspective to it. Next we're going to create a light gray vector rectangle that's going to act as our first business card. So I'm going to come over and choose the rectangle tool and click in my document and I'm going to make it 1050 by 600 pixels in size which is a standard business card in the US. So I can move that into the middle of my document and I'm going to right click that in the layers palette and convert it to a smart object. Then I'll rename it to card back. So now if I double click that smart object thumbnail it'll open up in a new document. So using the text tool, I'm going to create some text that just says back, and I'm going to scale it up and just move it to the middle of my image. So if I close this smart object and hit yes to save it, you'll see that it automatically updates in my working file. Next I'm going to right click on that and choose new smart object via copy, and I'm going to rename that to card front. And if I go into that smart object, I'm going to just change that text to say front, and close and save that. So now I have my front and back business cards, and if I resize them and move them around a bit, you can see just how they're laid out. Next we'll want to bring our reference photo into the document, so I'm going to drag that in, and I'm going to scale it up a bit just so my cards are a little bigger. Then I'm going to move that below my card front and card back layers. So I'm going to use this reference photo to get proper perspective on my business cards when I transform them. First I'm going to do the front, so I'm going to hide card back, and select the front card and press Ctrl T to enter free transform mode again and then I'm going to right click and choose distort. Now I can drag these four corners to match up with the corners in my reference image. Now I can hide the card front layer and unhide the card back layer and do the same thing. You can't really see the bottom right corner, but you can just line it up with the side and the bottom to make it match. It doesn't have to be perfect. So now I can unhide my card front layer and hide my reference image, and you'll see that my cards look like they have proper perspective. Next, I'm going to double click on the card front layer in the layers palette to bring up the layer style dialog. I'm going to turn on the gradient overlay effect, and I want the light source to look like it's coming from the top right of my image. So I'm going to rotate the angle around to about 75, and then I'll change the blend mode of my gradient to overlay and take the opacity down to about 50%. Next I'll turn on the drop shadow effect, and I want my drop shadow to have the same angle as my gradient, so I'm going to change that angle to 75, and I'm going to leave the distance set to 2 and change the size to 3 pixels. Make sure you have your blend mode set to linear burn and the opacity to 35%, and hit OK. Now I can hold Alt and click and drag from the word Effects and drag it onto my card back layer, and that will duplicate all the layer styles that we just created onto my new layer. 
At this point, you have a basic mock-up. If you're familiar with smart objects and how they work, you already know just how easy it'll be to come in and change these designs later. We're going to keep going to make our mock-up a little more realistic. I'm going to create a new group for my card front layer. So I'm going to rename that to card front and move my card front layer into that group. And then I'm going to press Ctrl J to duplicate my card front layer. Next, I'll right click and choose clear layer style to clear the layer styles from that layer. And then I'll double click that layer in the layers palette to open my layer style dialog again. This time I'm just going to add a color overlay and change that color to a nice light gray. The hex code we'll use is just DDD DDD. Then I'll hit OK. So now what I'm going to do is use my arrow keys and nudge that layer down just a couple of pixels. And then I'm going to click and drag to move it just beneath my original card front layer. Now you can't really tell yet because I have a drop shadow on my original card front layer. But if I click and drag from the word drop shadow, I can move that drop shadow into my other layer. Now I'm going to change this layer to card thickness. Now it's a little hard to see because my card design is almost the same color as my card thickness layer. But if I zoom in, you'll see that it adds just a couple pixels of card thickness to give us some more realism. I'm going to do the same thing for my card back layer. So I'm going to create a new group and name that card back. And move the card back layer into that group and then Control J to duplicate that again. And then I'll just clear the layer styles and add a new color overlay using the hex code of all Ds. And then I'll nudge that down a couple pixels and move it beneath my original card back layer and drag that drop shadow into the new card back layer. Then I can rename that one to card thickness. I'm gonna alt click on this arrow here to collapse all of my layer styles. Now what we're gonna do is add some depth of field. So I'm going to click on my background layer and press Ctrl J to duplicate that. And then I'm going to come up and click Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and give it a blur of 2.5 pixels and hit OK. Next I'll add a layer mask. And over here in the toolbar I'm going to click and hold and choose the gradient tool. If you look at the settings up here I have a black to white gradient and I have this icon selected, which is the reflected gradient icon. Then I'm just going to click and drag to create my gradient in that layer mask. So if you look at the thumbnail of my layer mask, you'll notice that it's black in the middle and fades out to white at the top and bottom. This allows our blurry background image to be hidden in the middle and fades out to visible at the top and the bottom, giving us a nice camera blur effect. I'm going to repeat this process for the front and the back cards to make them blurry at both the top and the bottom. So I'm going to click and duplicate my card front layer by pressing Ctrl J. And I'm going to rename that to card front blur. And then I'll come up and click filter Gaussian blur and leave it at 2.5 pixels and hit OK. So if I hold Alt, I can click and drag my layer mask from the background to my card front blur layer. And that will duplicate the layer mask into my new layer. Now I can do the same thing to my card back. So I'm going to duplicate the card back layer and rename that to card back blur and then I'll click filter Gaussian blur again and I can hold alt and click and drag one of my layer masks into my new card back blur layer so now you can see that my mock-up is nice and sharp in the middle but blurs out towards the edges of my image so I'm gonna alt click this up arrow here to collapse all my layer styles and then I'm gonna click these arrows to shrink my layer groups Next, I'm going to come up and add a curves adjustment layer and drag the middle of this curve down just a bit. And you can see that it darkens my entire image. So in the layer mask for my curves layer, I'm going to use the black brush and I'm going to paint in the middle just to give it a nice vignette effect. So if I turn that curves adjustment layer on and off, you can see that it adds darkness just to the corners of my image. So now we're done setting up our mock-up. So let's say we want to change the background. All I have to do is double click the smart object thumbnail to open that in a new window. And I can do something like create a new layer and fill it in with something like a medium gray. And if I close and save that, you'll see that my background automatically gets updated in my mockup. I'm going to go into my project files and open this front and back business card design that I created. Now I'll press Ctrl A to select this design and Ctrl C to copy it. And back in my original document, if I go into my card back layers, I can double click any of these smart object thumbnails to open it in a new window. And if I paste that in and close and save it, you'll see that my mockup updates with my design. So I'll do the same thing with the front design.
And now you can see just how easy it is to put different designs into our mockup. Since everything is a smart object, you can come into these layers later and make changes. So if I go back into my background smart object, you'll see that I can just delete that layer that I created earlier and close and save that to get my wood background back. You can use this same technique for mocking up almost anything, like posters and brochures. As long as you convert everything to a smart object before applying any filters or transformations, you can just copy and paste your designs in later without having to redo anything else. I'm John Shaver for Photoshop Video Academy. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.